what's happening guys Jason with 316 back with some more C5 Corvette action so today what we're gonna be doing is continuing my mission of updating the technology on this Corvette right here and uh, one of the things that I greatly miss about my Mustang was the uh, heated and cooled seats now being in Texas you would think that the cooled seats would be what I miss the most but honestly I rarely used them what I actually used was the seat heater and because again in Texas today it's 72 degrees in two days it's going to be 30 degrees so we like to jump around here cold leather on back equals horrible so I had a couple of options on this route here uh, one option was the uh, c7 corvette seats because the cooling features are all built into it the heating features are all built into it and that's the direction i wanted to take unfortunately use c7 seats run about three thousand dollars and that ain't happening so then i got to looking around and it's my plan b option is the cadillac xlr now cadillac basically just took a c5 and c6 corvette they uh fancied it up, put an inferior engine in it, and slapped a Cadillac badge on it. Uh, and the 05 through 09s have heated and cooled seats. They are significantly cheaper than the C7 seats. You can get a set of them for about 750 bucks, but I don't really like the look of them. I like the look of the Corvette seats. So that brings us to where we are today. And what I've got ah, is this. And this is a Dorman aftermarket seat heater. These are universal, they come with wiring, relays, the whole nine yards. And basically all you do is take the seat out, uh, take the skin off from it or loose from it, slide this guy up in there, put the seat back on and voila, you've got heated seats. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be pulling the seat out and uh, see about taking the hog rings off and trying to slide these under there. I'm hoping that I won't have to take the seat skins all the way off. I've uh, done a little bit of research on how you get the skins off and it looks like I can just loosen them and slide them in. So that's what I'm hoping to do today. So uh, yeah, if you hang with me real quick, we're gonna get the uh, seat out and on the ground and we will start our day. <laughs> so yeah, I basically just come over here and take out four 15 millimeter bolts, unhook the electrical connection and the seat could come out or should it come out, I should say. Now, uh, for those who were actually interested, the um, <coughs> the subwoofer situation has finally been resolved. Got the amp mounted there, got the actual stealth box set up, and of course my backup camera finally came and it works perfectly. So anyway, I'm going to pull this seat out now and take it up to the front of the vehicle and uh, we'll start looking at what it'll take. One thing I also want to look at while I'm in here is this thing has the notorious rocking, which is usually a broke bracket and a monster pain. I was going to see if there's a, maybe an easier way of doing it, but uh, we'll look at that when we get to it. So yeah, stick with me. I'll get this thing out of here and uh, we'll start the process of putting heated seats in it. Okay, so the seat is out now, and uh, it's funny, these brackets all look like they're in pretty good shape. I thought this was the uh, cause of my rocking. These uh, Corvette seats have two major problems. The tracks themselves slide back and forth because they've got little nylon bushings in there. They go bad, and then these brackets right here cause it to rock whenever you're on the gas and everything, and that's what I'm doing, but these guys are not broke which is a little bit odd to me. I don't understand it. Because I've had the, the seats slide back and forth before on my last C5, and it didn't feel like that. This, the seat actually feels like it's rocking, but those brackets are all fine. So that's a little bit perplexing, but uh, maybe a question for a different day. So right now what we're gonna be doing is, I'm gonna try, try mind you, to just take these hog rings off right here lift up the back of the seat pad and slide my seat heater in. I've already kind of done a test fit with them and they fit perfect in the middle. And then uh, same story here, we'll be taking this uh, channel off right here and try to swing it around and just get the stuff mounted in there with friction on the seat and see where it goes from there. May work, may not work. Uh, I'm just gonna try to do this as fast and easy as possible. So yeah, I'm gonna grab my parts and everything and start taking these hog ring pliers, or taking these hog rings off and see if I can flip this back up and slide that panel in. Ah. So we're just gonna take our normal slip joint pliers here and see if I can 
bend this out a little bit and the lighting really sucks in here but there's not much I can do about it because it's like 30 mile an hour winds outside today and this is the only indoor section I've got so we're just gonna have to make do Okay, so the two hog ring pliers are off, and as you can see, this back flap folds up, and I can get my hand down in there. Now, if I flip the seat back forward, I'm hoping I can just take this guy right here and slide it right in, and problem solved. It's Miller time. So, we'll see how this fits. I'll flip the seat over, and we'll see how this fits, and uh, yeah. Yeah, see, this guy's going to kind of sit right here in the middle and these seams right here are really the only thing I got to worry about because they're kind of like velcroed down but I think I can sneak it up in there and I don't think it matters which direction it goes either but let me grab this guy and double check that okay Universal Spit can be installed in any vehicle, front and rear bucket bench, permanently installs under upholstery. Looks like the foam is supposed to, looks like the adhesive is supposed to stick to the foam, which is good. Get you around here where you can kind of see what I'm doing. This is kind of hard to film, but I will do my very best. Alrighty. So basically what we're trying to do is stick this slide it up in there. I don't really care that much about the adhesive part of it per se. I might have to take these hog rings off to try to get it in there, but we will see. Yeah, I think these two hog rings are going to have to come off at minimum. So. Upholstery work is always fun. And by fun, I mean it's not fun in the slightest. Maybe as somebody who does this all the time, this is easy, but aside from a lost and probably upcoming video of me fixing the seat on the Fox Body Mustang back in the summer, I've never really done upholstery work. Alrighty, Ruth, that takes care of the hog rings. That shouldn't give me enough room to Get up in here and try to slide this thing in. There's one hog ring left on, but I think I can squeeze it in past it. Okay, so I've encountered a slight issue with this plan. And the fact is that uh, only a man whose butt is narrow can fit in this seat, and this pad is not such a pad. So. Uh, these seams right here are down into some Velcro and basically if I pull them up and put this in they're not going to stick down the seat's going to be loose so we're going to have to trim this pad to fit now I'm pretty sure there is a uh, somewhere there's a picture of this with a circle and a line through the middle of it and uh, would you look at that there it is <laughs> it says do not cut this however if you look at this there are these little wires that come through here and that is your heating element. It works just like a uh, electric blanket would. But if you look, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but there's a whole big section up here where there is no wire. It is nothing but the uh, pad itself. So we're gonna take Mr. Scissors right here and we are going to cut that crap out. And uh, hopefully that'll give us enough room. And if you look, that should give us enough room to fit in between right there or at least get close enough. So. What I'm going to want to do here is take my light and kind of shine through and now you can definitely see what it is I'm talking about. All this wiring here, as long as I don't cut the wiring, the heater element should work because the outside of it is nothing else. I mean, it's nothing but a... It's nothing but a uh, kind of like a fiberglass setup. So what we're going to do is start cutting and start praying otherwise I am literally cutting $50 up and just putting it down the drain. 
I think we'll be all right. So, now, if we come back over here and take a look-see, uh, we should come real dang close to fitting. That's my hope anyway. Ta-da! So that is slid up in there, kind of fit exactly as I needed it to, and I think we're okay here, because that'll fold down now, and the center section of this thing, provided I did not screw up whenever I cut it, the center section should be heated. Okay, I'm gonna call that a uh, win. Now we're gonna move on to the uh, upper seat back, and we're gonna before we go undoing anything, we're gonna make sure this one fits in between the seams or if I gotta do the little choppy choppy again. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna have to do the choppy chops again. And let Thought so. And yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to do the exact same thing with the, uh, the chopping nature of this. So i go ahead and do that before we Start lining anything up over here and uh, I'll pop the rear channel off and see about getting this guy in there. So Mr. Choppy Choppy has been done right here. We've got this guy kind of arranged. It looks like we didn't cut anything just like last time. So now we got to get this little channel off and these are just little weirdo seam like things. I had to deal with these on the Mustang too. And they just got kind of a little overlap on them like so. Okay, and that kind of gives access to the seat frame. And Alrighty, this one was a little bit trickier. It's kind of got some wrinkles in it, but I can't feel them from the front side. So uh, we're going to call that a uh, GED, which is good enough, dude. And we're going to stick it and put this stuff back on, put the hog rings back on, and uh, start wiring up the electronics, which... Truthfully, I may wire up the electronics before I get any of this crap back together just to make sure it's working, because that's always a good thing. <laughs> so this happy little bundle of wire right here should be pretty dang simple because it looks like it's pre-wired. It's probably just a uh, power on the ground. So got ourselves a relay, the two ends that plug in. We got a fuse block, so that looks like it's got a fuse panel hookup, but it's fused all to itself. Ground cable, and our switch right here, which has off and bottom only, and both. So yeah, it seems simple enough. It's just a power and a ground. So. Uh, yeah. All right, so I got a little alligator clip jumper set up here going in. Everything else over here should be pre-wired. Everything's hooked up. So we're going to take this guy right here and flick it on. Shows we got power. So let's see if we've got butt warmers. Feel anything happening yet but I haven't caught on fire either so that's always a plus uh, all right it's taking too long uh, I don't have a whole lot of shall we say patience well I definitely feel warmth happening here on that one. Oh yeah oh yeah we got warmth happening definitely working so uh, my plan worked I did not wind up uh, chopping anything off so we're gonna put some hog rings on and put the seat back in we're gonna see about uh, wiring this thing up to the car itself okay so I uh, got the top piece back on here and in the most amusing uh, part of the episode is uh, Jason the uh, expert level mechanic who can you know Put an LS1 and a T56 into an Impala SS or, you know, wire up a complete stereo. Uh, 
has done every mechanical job known to man, I cannot for the life of me figure out how in the world hog ring pliers work. So we go to Google. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I don't want a YouTube video, even though I make YouTube videos. Just give me a picture. Uh, pull the pliers open, set the hog ring. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Twist the screw to make a pull the handles to open the pliers. Set the hog ring over the area you need to connect together. Okay, I've done that. Uh, place the jaws over the hog ring. Ring should be set in between the grooves on the jaw. You know what? Screw it. Slip joints. There. Okay. So get this guy kind of here. Fling this one down. We'll repeat the step with the hog ring pliers, and we'll be back to putting the thing in the car. Okie dokie, seat back in, wiring allegedly done, like everything else on this car, it was a royal and complete pain in the butt. Just followed the same playbook as I did on the uh, stereo system, ran it over to the other side, grounded, tapped into the same switched hot that's uh, powering the radio, here's hoping it's enough amperage on the fuse that I don't blow it with the radio and the uh, seat heater on, but uh, came in and drilled out right here, so I gotta mount that guy. 100% perfect, same as up here, but uh, yeah, that's our heated seat switch, so we're going to go ahead and clip the accessories on, and seat heater is on, powered up, working as it should. So, that should be the whole nine yards on it, I'm just going to slap this guy back in and we're going to call that good. So, uh, yeah. Oh, as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more.